even though I'm going to talk about the precious metals in the stock market, I want to go over first about real estate because real estate was the hot ticket item from say 2000 early 2007 and even during 2007 when the bubble broke people were in denial and thinking it was going to bounce or just steady out around 2008 and in the United States it's still down but in other areas of the world actually real estate can be an excellent investment it's just not good in generally speaking in the United States unless you're by the Bakken oil reserve where real estate is in short supply and people will pay top dollar for houses and rentals but uh, I just want to put this in perspective because um, the precious metal people are going to misadvise people because after a while because it's not well obviously we're not in a bubble yet on precious metals but they are going to keep pushing this spiel because you know I was I believed in precious metals since the 90s. You know, I was aware of what was going on in the Federal Reserve. And if you told anybody in real estate about precious metals, or they think, forget it. You know, stocks, they'd think they'd be thinking you're crazy for thinking about precious metals. But I always had some for way back. Always did. But these are the reasons, and you know, they sound a hell of a lot better than precious metals. Real estate increases in value on average historically on most years. Now, yes, in the last few years it went down, but, you know, think back to what it was, you know, a dec a hundred years ago, and look at the performance. The performance has been very well. You could say the same thing about precious metals, but real estate has done well, too. Cash flow from rental income. Now, that's something you're not going to get from precious metals, because they just sit someplace in a safe or maybe if they're consumed in industry and once they're consumed in industry for use they're gone until they're recycled sometime years later if they're ever recycled um, equity builds up as the mortgage is paid down now in the case of precious metals you buy them outright there is no mortgage so whatever the equity is it's something you purchase right away and it's done retirement income now precious metals it can, some people are probably going to screw up on this and keep precious metals too long thinking they're a safe haven asset forever and ever and they are not going to be uh, in a case of real estate if you have rental income well it could be it depends you know obviously if you don't have the renters then you have a problem right but it could be much better than uh, any type of precious metals because it's going to keep generating income as long as you can lease or rent that property forever it just goes forever everybody needs land everybody needs land uh, investing in property many of the expenses are tax deductible so if you spend something on the property capital improvements uh, it could be just maintenance cost or whatever it's deductible borrowing unlike most investments real estate you can borrow with eighty percent loan to value may be higher could be depends on what the property is I know there's a lot of 50 million rules but you're not going to get a loan <clears throat> to make an investment unless you're using a credit card on a uh, lump of precious metal real estate you can live in it <laughs> that's obviously something you can't do with precious metals uh, so it has a very utilitarian use real estate does have a very utilitarian use and property is something almost everybody is familiar with a lot of people aren't too familiar with the precious metals although they're getting more familiar with them with all the people out there selling all their features why you should own them and stuff now I'm not disagreeing in this particular time and age when governments are going to default <laughs> no doubt hold precious metals that's, an ins that's the only insurance policy that's actually going to pay out and you know it's going to pay out because you own the, the actual insurance policy itself you own the underlying asset now um, <clears throat> I want to go over something with this 1930s stock market crash and you know this is an exponential chart and you know what I found interesting because I was looking at a lot of stuff you know it went up to a high here in 1929 of uh, 381 and it dropped to 198 index on the 29 crash now that's about a 50 percent retracement and it doesn't look like it on this chart because this is an exponential chart and <laughs> 
you know, it looks like a little blip on a peak, but that is a 50% retracement. So, you know, it actually, should, if it was not exponential, it would be graphically halfway down around this point someplace. Now, there was a bounce, and, you know, I am kind of thinking about something when Mark Farber and Jim Rogers say there's a bigger crash coming in the future. You know, I'm looking at this. There was a 50% retracement, and I don't think maybe there's a good correlation or anything, but it's something I was thinking about to put things in perspective. You know, this was uh, about 13,200 and went down to uh, 7,200. That was approximately almost a 50% retracement. It's going up. It's been going up, and, but largely because of quantitative easing. And, you know, that wasn't something that was practiced the way it is now in the 1930s. It is there's like there's a lot of money being pumped into the system. But, you know, when I look back at this chart, this was just a tip of the iceberg. You know, this drop, this major drop. And actually, this is where Jesse Livermore made his money. And, of course, he lost all his money on this. He should have been out of the market during his whole, because by the time uh, the 30s came about, uh, he lost his money. And I guess it was all during this. But all during this bigger, major drop, um, everybody in the world that was an expert, anything you read, any place, they were telling you that was it. You know, it would drop some, go up, oh, oh it's recovering, drop some more, up, oh, it's recovering. Now, this may not happen like this in the stock market per se but this is probably what's going to happen generally speaking in the economy per se because they're going to keep the stock prices high because the personality Ben Bernanke is going to keep printing money but I think the economy itself is probably stagnating more and more and that's not something that has to be written in stone obviously not but um I think the biggest problem is that there's a lot of uh, fluff in the economy that isn't like, uh, you know, essential to what people actually need. There's a lot of, uh, you know, consumer service oriented BS economy. Um, that's probably why there's going to be some problems, you know. I look at hard goods that are reality and I look at many other things that are just fluff, garbage, you know. But... Um, this may be the trend, you know, like when you're talking about when Mark Farber and Jim Rogers say there's going to be a harder crash coming up in the future. Um, you know, if you're looking back during this time, during the, you know, 29 crash, this is the first crash, was the 29 crash. Not graphically represented very good because it's a 50% retracement. This is an exponential chart. But then there was a little bit of a bounce, and then it dropped down to the bottom here where lost like 90% of its value inside of a few years. Now, they might not let the prices go down that much by, you know, printing more and more money, but in reality, the stock prices probably will go that low in reference to real dollars. That's what I'm thinking, and the only way to protect your money is through precious metals because a hell of a lot of people are starting to jump, they are going to jump on board with the precious metals, I think, after this next last correction. Um, one other thing I was going to go over, too, um, you know, the 2008 crisis was really from, well, banking failures and everything like that. AIG, the world's largest insurer, went under and stuff like that. I think there's something coming up with this euro problem again. They're kind of glossing it over too much. I know Greek Greece did default, but I don't. There's something coming up. I think I something isn't right. Uh, I'm just gonna read this. It's kind of like some highlights of things. The biggest underwriter of default default swaps, a type of insurance, was AIG, the world's largest insurer. Without reserve requirement limitations, it was free to underwrite as many swaps as it can print, and that's what it did. AIG Financial Products Unit underwrote more than three trillion worth of derivatives with absolutely zero dollars reserved for paying any potential claim. Uh, underrunning swaps are enormously lucrative as long as you don't count on into crashing and burning into insolvency. Now I think what's going to happen with this Greek thing is that all the countries, you know, the, you know, Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Spain, they're all going to 
they're all gonna they're all gonna just walk away from the whole thing. And if Italy does, I don't even know if that's that's the third largest economy in Europe. I don't know what's gonna happen then. Something isn't right about this whole situation. Uh, Greek credit default swaps triggered to bring about 2.5 billion payout. Major banking underwriters will be bailed out by central banks with severe default by the pigs. Even major central banks would become strained. Major banks and central banks would destroy most fiat country currencies by printing money, sending precious metals skyward. I think that's what's going to happen, but I think we're going to have some kind of crisis coming up here, and they're being a little bit too quiet and making everything look too good right for now. You know, that's it, it's just something about the whole situation doesn't so, seem right with me. And I don't like saying it's like totally in, intuition, but, um, you know, they're saying there's to be this big problem. All of a sudden, there is no problem. And I don't know. I just something doesn't sit right with me on this whole thing. So I, you know, I'm seeing gold dropping down a little bit more and more. It's you know, it, gold and silver's taking this downward trend, and I know it possibly can go up, but um, I think there's going to be some sudden death news out here that's going to bring down gold very hard, and there's going to be an economic crisis, and there's going to be a liquidity crunch, and they're just going to run out of these risk assets, and we're going to see a bottom in the gold and the silver here pretty shortly. That's what I'm guessing. Now as far as um, the uh, markets themselves, what I've noticed back in 2008 is the commodities and all the risk assets, people were running out of them first and they were going down and what happened after that was the equities market started to be affected. So, you know, Mark Farber's kind of hinting at something coming up in the future, probably maybe some few months from now or so. Um, it could be. It could be. We might see this correction coming up with the commodities. And I'm not thinking oil, though. I'm thinking all the commodities except for oil. And um, it might be coming up in this month or maybe the first week of uh, April. And, um, you know maybe they won't react right away I'm not sure but uh, I think what's gonna happen followed by that is probably the equities markets are gonna go down that's when you're gonna start seeing more announcements about QE and that's when I'm thinking that all the metals are gonna be taken off again pretty soon so um, it's gonna you know if I got this time right you know you could actually you know because I don't think all the markets are gonna fall apart here in the next several months I don't think there's even any kind of problems with that. Um, so I'm looking at, you know, possibly making some more money off the markets right now. While everything is not uh, totally chaotic. And uh, because they will have to honor their commitments. Because if they don't honor their commitments, absolutely, you know, if it becomes public consensus that you can't trust anything on paper, <laughs> forget it. The whole thing is it's going back to the Stone Age. And even if you have precious metals it's not going to help you too much because all transactions are going to be stopped so I don't think it's going to that type of uh, dramatic stage so fixed so quickly um, it might be at, you know a series of things and I don't think every brokerage house is run by John Corzine either so I mean even though they probably got the same type of character it's not going to always be the same way because I think he was a little bit exceptional you know but, um, you know, as far as this, the uh, Dow and all that stuff and all the general equities markets, you know, if you see the metals crashing first, I would, if I was holding any general stocks, you know, I would get out of them. I would get out of them because I would think that the stock market would be the next thing to get hit. And it kind of does make sense because, you know, looking at what happened in the 30s here, I know this is not very good represented very well graphically because this actually is a 50% retracement. And uh, this is actually a 50% retracement. But when you, uh, you know, this bounced, everybody's thinking, you know, like we had a higher bounce because of QE. You know, when this bounced, the next step down was all the way here. And all during these years, these people were saying, you know, this this is a recovery, it's recovering, this is recovering, that was recovering, this was recovering. 
they're full of it you know nothing was recovered now I don't think the markets are gonna go like this like so far down but as far as the worth of the fiat currencies you know if you measured it in real dollars then markets may be going down that much in real dollars so actually it's gonna come about that the only safe haven for the near future is going to be the precious metals after this last pullback and I uh, as far as the precious metals I want to keep this in mind because real estate is actually in generally speaking is a better investment than precious metals if you look over the last hundred years you know you could make money with real estate you know it can generate income for you you can lease it you know if you're uh you know if you have a whole pile of people leasing buildings and stuff like that and renting properties it does a hell of a lot better than real estate and not this i'm not necessarily talking about capital gains when you go to buy and sell it like you're uh you know um what do you i forgot what the heck that is that's like when you're a dealer in land you know but um and that even that could be lucrative you could take properties that you know don't have value and if you're smart enough you could change them into something else get them rezoned and they can have a lot more value there's a lot more flexibility in real estate but the market crashed the market crashed at one point in time the precious metals market's going to crash too so i'm keeping this in mind but i see that at least for two more years the precious metals market is going to be very very bullish 